project for linear expressions and quadratic expressions. And I'm Melanie. I'm Janet. I'm Leslie. And we're going to begin with the linear equation. Okay, so first off, we're going to explain what a linear function and what a quadratic function is and what it looks like. A linear function looks like this and it's going up, and it looks like this and it's going downward. It would be linear because it's going in a straight line. A quadratic line would look like this if it's concave down, and it would look like this if it's concave up. For linear, you'd use the equation y equals mx plus z to find which is your slope formula. Um, and your m is your slope, and then your b is your starting point. And then for quadratic, you'd use ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and it's a polynomial to the second degree. So first, I'm going to read the hypothetical. Emily is standing on a 15-foot building. She throws a paper airplane, and it goes down a straight path. Find the slope of the airplane. So first, I'm going to graph it. I'm going to start at 15, because that's the um, height of the building. And I'm going to go down to 14, because it goes down in a straight line. Um, next, I'm going to plot three points. I'm going to plot 15, 0, so 15 here. Um, 96. look like that. First, I'm going to do slope formula, and I'm going to use the first point, which is 15, 0, and the second point, which is 9, 6, and I label them my x1 and x2 and y1 and x2. And then this is the formula, the slope formula, and to plug them in, it's um, 6 minus 0 over 9 minus 15. Then we get 6 over negative 6, which equals negative 1. And to plug it into the, to y equals mx plus z, we'd get y equals negative 1 x plus 15 because that's our starting point. Um, now we're going to talk about the uh, quadratic formula and quadratic equation. So Liza was standing below Emily at the bottom of a hill. She threw the ball up towards the same direction the paper plane was flying. Um, and she starts at 1.5 feet. Like, she throws the ball up at 1.5 feet. So, um, if I were to grab this, it would be right here at um, 1.5. And then it ends at 10. So, and it goes up. Like the, what's it called? Okay. The maximum point is at 14 feet at 6. Yeah. So it would go up like that. We're going to have to find the vertex form in order to find the standard form at first. So we need to find two points. And one would be the vertex point, which is the maximum point, since it's a um, concave down. And then we're going to have to find a point that's on, uh, like, x, y. So the equation is y equals a parentheses x minus h parentheses squared plus k. So um, the points I chose were 6, uh, comma, 14, and then 0, comma, 1.5. And then we're going to plug that in, which would be y equals, well, sorry. It would be 1.5 equals a and then zero minus six squared plus fourteen. So um and we have to we had to plug in the x y in order to find a. So we plugged in the points into the vertex form and now we're gonna start solve it. So it would be since right now we have one point five equals a 
parentheses 0 minus 6 squared plus 14. Um, we're just going to basically square 6. We're going to square 6, which is 36, so it would be 1.5 equals A. 36 squared, oh, no, sorry, <laughs> 36 plus 14. So, so far we have 1.536A plus 14. Now we're going to do minus 14 um, from both sides, which would be negative 12.5. equals 36a and now we're going to have to divide um 30 we're going to have to divide negative 12.5 and 36a by um, 36 which gets us um a equals which makes a equal um is negative 0 0.5 okay so now we're gonna change this equation which is y equals negative 0 0.5 x minus 5 squared plus 14 um the vertex one we're gonna change it into standard form so um right here we basically already expanded x minus 5 so now all we have to do is multiply and add the 14, which would be y equals negative 0 0.5 squared x squared minus, no sorry, plus 5 since all of the, both of these are negative. So plus 5x then plus no, negative um, 12.5. Plus and now we're going to simplify this and it's going to give us the standard form. So it would be y equals negative 0 0.5 x squared um, plus 5x and then plus 1.5. each other so I can put them side to side so I'll do 1x plus 15 equals negative 0.5x squared plus 5x plus 1.5 and I'm going to add this 1x to get rid of it and I'll bring it to this side so I have 15 equals negative 0.5x squared plus 6x plus 1.5 and I'm going to subtract this 15 to make the equation equal 0 so I'll have 0 equals negative 0 0.5x squared plus 6x. Minus 13.5. So this is going to be the equation that I'm going to work with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide them all by uh, negative 0 0.5. Just because I want to get that x squared by itself. Because it's going to make it more easier when I'm simplifying everything. So um, dividing by negative 0 0.5. I'll get 0 equals x squared minus 12x and plus 27. Okay, so now that we have the equation basically of the linear and the quadratic one uh, kind of merged together, I'm going to use a quadratic formula uh, for x squared minus 12x plus 27. Technically, we can do like, we can complete the square or we can factor, or I'll just use the quadratic formula, which is negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So now I'm going to find my variables. A has to equal 1 because it's x squared, so it's just 1. B is going to be negative 12, and C is going to equal 27. So now all that I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into the equation. So B is already negative, uh, which means that that negative 12 turns to positive. So it's going to be 12 plus or minus. And then the square root is B uh, squared, so it's going to be negative 12 squared, which will eventually turn positive, minus 4A, which is 1, and C, 27 over 2a, which is just 2, 1. 
So I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to start simplifying. Uh, negative 12 squared is going to be 144 because when you square negative and positive, minus, and then 14 to 27 is uh, 108 and then over 2. So now I'm going to find what's inside of the square root. I'm going to bring it over here. So it's going to be 12 plus or minus 144 minus 108 is 36. And we know the square root of 36 is 6. So I'll do 12 plus or minus 6 over 2. So this means that our first x is going to be 12 plus 6 over 2, which is 18 over 2, which is 9. So x1 is going to equal 9. And we have to do the other scenario, which would be negative, so it's going to be 12 minus 6 over 2. 12 minus 6 is 6, over 2 equals 3. So the second x is 3. So that um, so basically, um, the x-intercepts where they intersect are going to be 9-something, and then are going to be 3-something. And we'll find out what those are once I put it into the equation. Use the linear equation because it's just easier to substitute. So it's going to be y equals negative 1. I'll do 3 pairs. 3 plus 15, so y equals negative 3 plus 15, which means that y equals 12. So our first intersection will be 3, 12. So if I look here, 3, 12, it's right here. So they intersect at 3, 12. Now I'm going to find where they intersect the second time. So now I'm going to do y equals negative 1, parentheses, but now I'm doing it for 9, plus 15. So y equals negative 9 plus 15, which is y equals 6, which means that our second intersection is going to be 9, 6, and if I look over here, 8, 9, 9, 6. So the intersections where the plane and the ball would intersect in the air, or at least where their paths would intersect, would be at 312 and at 9, 6. Which is um, basically... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs>